Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. The Park City Education Foundation goes beyond what our public schools can offer to meet the needs of our teachers, educators, and our entire community and students here in Park City. T talk more about this program as well as their after school programs, which we're going to talk about in depth today, is Jennifer Billow, the Associate Director of the Park City Education Foundation, as well as Angie Duffner, who is a Title I specialist and also works with the After School Reading Intervention Program at McPollin Elementary. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So, Jennifer, I'm, the Park City Education Foundation inspires excellence and innovation within our students here in Park City. So tell me about how that, the after school program reaches that goal and also kind of the history of the after school program with the foundation. Yeah, sure. So um, the Ed Foundation, we've been around 32 years and every year now we're raising over a million dollars from this generous community and putting it back into the schools. But about 12 years ago in 2007, 2008, you know, the crash had come. The Ed Foundation was funded mostly by developers. All that money went away. And at the same time, we had, um, there was a big influx of a new population and schools were really struggling to figure out, you know, how to serve all of these students. Um, and so what the Ed Foundation was asked for at that time was an after-school program and they decided to pilot it at McPollin Elementary. So it was a safe place that kids could stay after school. It also was an extended learning day so they could work on their homework. Kids who were struggling could work in subjects they were struggling in and helping um, especially kids that had English as a second language. That was the primary focus at that time. Um, fast forward 12 years later, every elementary school has an after-school program. It's every day. It's till 6 o'clock. Um, and it serves, uh, oh gosh, I want to say three or four hundred kids in the district. Um, and it has extended even through ninth grade. So Ecker and Treasure also have after school programs now. What's um, exciting that has happened in the after schools, it's gone beyond just a learning day, too. So we have a lot of partners with the school district, so Basin Rec might, you know, offer uh, on-site, you know, sports and activities. There's Taekwondo at Parley's. There's Eats, um, Eat Awesome Things at School, comes in and does cooking classes. So there's a cultural and fun element as well as a learning element. Um, one thing that has happened this year that's very exciting is Angie Duffner, who is the Title I specialist at McPollin, um, has came up with a, a program for one-on-one -on -one reading intervention because we all know if kids can't read they're going to struggle their whole way through school. One-on-one um, -on -one is expensive, right? And so, you know, she, she and uh, Mr. Ed, the principal, came to us for some funding and through the Hall Family Fund we were able to find funds to fund this and it kind of continues our work with um, foundations as well, which is a, a dyslexic reading program. So Angie can tell you far more about what that program's doing, but I, I think it's been exciting to see um, what's happening with these kids. Oh, absolutely. So Angie, tell me a little bit about your background and what made you decide to take this initiative with this reading intervention program. So I've been, um, we moved here about 10 years ago from Chicago and I um, started teaching and I started teaching actually at Parley's um, in the dual immersion program and um, just really got interested in that and focusing in on reading and um, students who are um, English language learners. And so um, when I got my job at McPone a couple of years ago, I was the Title I specialist and gonna be just working with English language learners. So last summer, I started doing some tutoring and realized that when you go to a parent-teacher conference and the teacher says to you, your child is falling behind in reading or their reading skills aren't up to par, your probably first thing to do is look for a tutor, right? Mm -hmm. So that your child doesn't get, it doesn't fall behind. So what I noticed though is there are so many people in our community, especially at McPoland, they're working two and three jobs just to make rent, just to put food on the table, just to put clothes on their kids' backs. So when they get the news that, hey, your child's falling behind, their child just continues to fall further and further behind because there are no resources to go and say, I need to get a tutor for my child or I need to send them somewhere. So um, we thought about the Solomon Fund here in Park City kind of levels the playing field for activities for kids. So my um, other two interventionists at the school, there's three of us, we decided, hey, if the Solomon Fund can level the playing field for activities, why can't we try and level the playing field for academics? So 
the other two interventionists, Amy Warren and Laura Todd and I, we just decided to see if we can't, we couldn't put something together. So we ran it by Bob Edmonston, our principal, and he loved the idea. And so we just kind of ran with it. And it started out pretty basic where we said, okay, uh, here's about four or five kids that we would like to do some individual tutoring with, a one-on-one -on -one intervention program. And all three of us have been trained in either Orton-Gillingham or Wilson, which are two um, um, dyslexia programs for students who are having difficulty learning to read. And so we decided to take a few kids after school and before school and see if we couldn't make a difference. Well, it just kept kind of spiraling and we got another teacher on board, Suzanne Sheridan, and so she started doing it. And then um, about November, we started kind of looking at the results and they were incredible. And so um, we started expanding the program and we have another teacher from the high school who came on board, her name's Elaine Peterson. And sh her um, kind of role with it all is she does what's called dyad reading and that's where you sit with a child and you um, partner read with them and you're reading together to develop fluency and prosody. And um, we were able to get in more kids with her. Um, she does two days a week. So right now we're servicing about 20 kids before and after school. And um, the after school um, has funded three of us to go to a uh, training this spring where we will learn to do our one-on-one -on -one intervention with a group of kids so that we'll be able to service two and three kids at one time versus one-on-one. -on -one. So we're really trying to look at ways to bring in more kids and um, these students having more time with school, more time to learn to read the way they can learn to read. They're, they're probably two, three years behind, but um, we had our uh, middle of the year assessments in January and the numbers that we're coming up with are just incredible with the growth that we're having. And, you know, I think it's just really so exciting to see because I've been working with a couple kids since last year and their confidence level is mm -hmm. amazing. It must be so rewarding to see yeah. that growth, you know, starting from the beginning, seeing where it's at now, and then seeing the need. But I'm curious about just the nuts and bolts of the after-school program, how the reading intervention program works within that. Like, what, what are the kids doing? What does it look like day to day? Mm -hmm. So, well, Angie can speak to McPullen spe specifically, but I know in general across most of the schools, they're, you know, the kids, they've been in school all day already, right? So this is one thing we learned is you cannot then have another three hours of just academics because their brains, they're tired. We would hate to do that, right? <laughs> yeah. So you come in, you get a snack, There's you go out and play if you can, or go into the gym. There's always an activity component. And it's, so it's usually broken up into three different pieces, so an activity, a cultural component, and then a learning component. So this is where the the intervention would come in is, is during that component with these kids who can stay after school. And of course it's free to them and, and normally tutoring is very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and so these kids would not be able to, to get that at all. So, so that's, I, I don't know if you mean like exactly where does it fit into the day but that, that's how it works. And kids yeah. usually rotate through. So, mm -hmm. so some people might be a, in the recess or fun um, activity component. Some might be in a cultural component and some will be in the learning component and then they switch around. And I'm, I think what's interesting, you know, we've talked a little bit about dyslexia and said Orton G Gillingham. And what, what these are is they're phonics based um, reading curriculums. So even though we think of dyslexic students when you think of Wilson sometimes, what, what we found, what studies have shown is that they help all kids across the board. So that is why the school district with initial funding from the Ed Foundation has put in the, those reading programs for K through three across all elementary schools because it, it catches every struggle, struggling reader, not just um, dyslexic ones, and it helps all readers in some ways. So um, if you aren't learning in the traditional way, you'll be caught with this reading program. So what Angie is doing is just the kids who are really struggling the most and who would not get any tutoring, um, this is helping them. Well, and it's good to hear that you're 
cognizant of the fact that these kids have been in school all day. They're probably a little mm -hmm. tired, they need a break. So it's nice to know that the program really is looking at the kids and their needs, but also using that time wisely. And I also appreciate how, as a parent, you know, you're right, these parents are moving working multiple jobs, they're already overwhelmed, mm -hmm. likely. And mm -hmm. to hear your child has a problem, a lot of times you blame yourself as a yeah. parent. Mm -hmm. And then it just gets harder and harder to know what to do. And so how can a parent find out more, get their child involved in this program, and just you know maybe feel some hope if they're mm -hmm. in that situation, really? Mm -hmm. um, well, Angie, you could talk specifically to McPollin. OK, so yeah, so at McPollin, what we do is, um, the students, just like Jen said, they'll go and they'll um, have a snack or go out to recess, but the students that we see right after school, they come straight to us and we give them a snack. And we provide them what we call brain break, where we have a basketball hoop in our room, we've got a soccer net, we've got hula hoops, we've got tons of things for them to do. So we'll allow, allow them to have a little bit of a brain break snack time for five minutes. They um, start coming to us, we, we do some tutoring. When we see that they need a break, we give them a break again for five minutes. We're into like little five minute breaks versus like 30 <laughs> minutes of breaks, but they love that. Um, and so basically what we're doing right now is we're looking at who are the students in the after school program, who is significantly behind that we need, that would need this catch up time. And if they're not in the after school program, we're actually calling them up and inviting them hey, this, there's this great program, and oh, by the way, you get this great after-school program and intervention after school for reading. And so it's kind of a, a mesh of the two. And um, it's been great because most of the students that we do have come after school and before school, they really need the after-school program, the camaraderie of friendship. They do tons of field trips. They, the teachers that teach after school are, are phenomenal and just really loving to the kids. They need that. And to, to be here till six o'clock where they have a safe place, they can do their homework. And like I said, get some, some uh, intervention, reading intervention at the same time. It's just a win-win situation yeah, for them. Just a Great program. Yeah. We are out of time, sadly. I'd love to talk yeah. about this even more, but Jen, where can we get more information online? So you can go to PCEF for kids, the number four kids.org, and to always to general. Um, you can you know email Angie A. Duffner at PCSchools.us. Um, this is just at McPollin. It, it, it is expensive, so we hope to spread it to other schools. We need funders though, because this is this is a big one. Um, but it makes a huge difference. Definitely. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Angie and Jennifer, Thanks. for being thank here. Yeah. All right, that's the Park City Education Foundation. I feel really lucky to have children in the school district who are benefiting from these incredible programs. Check them out online. They need your help. They need funds to be able to continue these incredible programming options for after-school programs and reading intervention. And also, don't forget, Running With Ed. We'll talk more about that in probably about a week here, but go online, register. It's a really great, fun community event and it raises money for our schools. All right, much more coming up after this break.